In the last lecture, we talked about muscles of facial expression. In this lecture, we're going to primarily discuss muscles of mastication. Uh, two of the four being the temporalis and masseter. But before we get to those muscles of mastication, I'd like to talk about a few muscles in your neck, since they're on this picture. The first one is called the splenius capitis, and the next one is called the sternocleidomastoid. These two are often learned together because they have similarities in that when you rotate your head right to left, they work together to do that. They also can be considered antagonists of one another because when both of your sternocleidomastoid muscles contract, your head and neck flexes, whereas when your splenius capitis muscles contract, your head and neck extend. So let's first look at the splenius capitis. The word splenius is deriv derived from bandage, because someone thought it looked like a bandage on the back of, of a neck. Now again, most of these muscles were identified and named in a cadaver. So if we were to look at a cadaver in the back of the, the neck, it would look like there are bandages on the back of their neck. Capitus refers to the head, and that's where it inserts. It inserts at the mastoid process. Recall that your mastoid process is located just behind your ear. and You can see how that muscle would come up and attach to that mastoid process. The sternocleidomastoid also attaches to the mastoid process. So they both have the same insertion. The difference is where do they pull towards? The splenius capitis is going to pull down on the back part of that mastoid process. And if you pull down on the back part of the mastoid process, you look up. When you look up into the sky, we call that extension of the head and neck. So it extends the head. The sternocleidomastoid is going to pull that mastoid process downward more anteriorly. And when both your sternocleidomastoid muscles do that, you look down at your toes. When you look down at your toes, we call that flexion, flexing your head and neck. So for that reason, these muscles are antagonistic. One helps you look up, the other helps you look down. Together, they help you rotate the head. Rotation of the head is looking to the right and looking to the left. That, act, that motion is actually uh, being done at the atlantoaxial joint. If you remember, that's the joint between your atlas and your axis. That's the pivot joint that allows your head to rotate. The muscles that are causing that motion are primarily the splenius capitis and sternocleidomastoid. The third muscle in the neck here is called the trapezius because of its shape, it's a trapezoid shape, you wouldn't know that from here because this is just a very small portion of the trapezius muscle. The trapezius is mostly found in the upper back and it's a trapezoid shape so it's got four sides, two of the sides are parallel. Um, this muscle does a lot of things, a lot of actions, but the primary action is at the scapula so it inserts at your scapula, it helps elevate it, it moves your scapula up. Like if you were to reach up and change a light bulb, you would have to elevate that scapula. It also helps retract it. It moves the scapula posteriorly because this muscle, again, is, is largely located in the back. So it moves that scapula towards the back, which is called retraction of the scapula. Okay, well let's talk about the muscles of mastication. They're all going to insert somewhere on the mandible because in order to chew your food, you move the mandible. Uh, the joint that that motion is uh, being accomplished using is the TMJ, the temporal mandibular joint, which is located right here. The four muscles of mastication include the temporalis, 
which is going to help elevate the mandible, but also retract the mandible, move it posteriorly. The masseter primarily just elevates that mandible, but it adds the most force to that action. Uh, the masseter is by far one of the strongest muscles in the human body. It's not very big, but its muscle contraction provides more force per uh, weight than any other muscle in the body. It's a very, very strong muscle. But when you bite down, that's elevating your mandible. It's a little confusing when you say elevating the mandible and biting down. But when you bite down, that again is moving that mandible up. So both of these muscles help to do that. The temporalis, though, is going to help move that mandible posteriorly as well. Then you have two muscles called pterygoids, a medial and lateral pterygoid. They are very deep muscles, so you don't see them on this drawing. We're going to have to use another drawing to identify those two muscles. But they help to protract and lateral excursion, which is side-to-side -side movement. Another muscle, not a muscle of mastication, so I changed the color again back to red, is called the buccinator or buccinator, or I've heard people pronounce it buccinator. Bucca or buckle means cheek. So this muscle is actually found in your cheeks, not your zygomatic bone, but actually in the soft cheek portion of your mouth, the lateral sides of your mouth. This muscle helps you compress your cheeks when you whistle. Uh, it also helps you when you're eating, but it's not a muscle of mastication. What it does is help squeeze that food in between your teeth. It keeps the food from going into your cheeks. So it helps compress that food underneath your teeth so you can chew that food. Babies use this muscle as well. A suckling baby uses this, this muscle uh, to get milk from the mom's breast. It's also used when you kiss. So, you know, whistling and kissing is very similar as far as mus muscular activity. Here's a deeper view of the muscles of mastication as well as, as the buccinator. Uh, we've removed a lot of muscles of the face primarily so we could see these pterygoid muscles. The word pterygoid actually means wing-shaped. and You can really see why they would call that when you look at the lateral pterygoid. It looks much like a wing. So here's the lateral pterygoid. Here's the medial pterygoid. You can see that it's a little closer to the midline than the lateral. What do they do? They help protract. The lateral pterygoid helps depress a little bit. So pulls the mandible down a little bit when you open your mouth. And then they both help lateral excursion. Lateral excursion is side-to-side -side movement. So these muscles are really useful when you're grinding food in between your teeth because they do the protraction and the side-to-side. -side. Recall that the temporalis is the one that does the retraction. And then the masseter, as well as the temporalis, do the elevation of the mandible. So now you can do all kinds of things with that mandible when you're chewing your food. Next video we're going to start we're going to look at muscles of the tongue and then we'll we'll move on from there.